Hello, I'm Fadbarda Lamche. Today we're going to discuss about post-harvest handling practices. Well, the great nutritional and economic value of food products such as fruits, vegetables, legumes, etc. are already known. They are the source of many vitamins, microelements, fibers, antioxidants, carbohydrates and many other substances that are essential to the human body. But it is also known that uh, the shelf life of these products is short if uh, we do not pay the proper attention for preserving them. Well, to increase the shelf life of this product, uh, such as uh, fruits and vegetables, to increase also the quality of these products, several factors must be considered, such as harvesting time or harvesting methods or modes of transport, storage condition, etc. Well, in this lecture we will discuss about the characteristics of raw material that might be considered for processing and conservation. There are cleaning methods, some minimal processing techniques, as well as the impact of post-harvesting techniques in maintaining the quality of this processing material. Food processing is generally seasonal, uh, not only for consumer demands but also for raw materials. For example, let's talk about olives. Uh, which is a seasonal product. They can be harvested only once a year. For example, in Medi Mediterranean area, uh, they will be harvested uh, at uh, between October and December. I emphasize Mediterranean because uh, uh, different uh, climat climatic zones have different maturity of uh, the products and, of course, different harvesting time. Uh, but even being a seasonal product, consumer, uh, consumer demand for olives or olive oil is throughout the year. All the year they want to, to consume olives, even olive oil. And therefore the preservation of olives through different techniques and the production of olive oil allows this product to be available for all year. But there are some other products that uh, are available through the year, such as milk, for example. But even the availability of this product during the year also can be determined some unpredictable factors, such as weather condition or animal fertility, that may affect the production performance of the milk. Milk is distinguished for its nutritional value as well as for the variety of its byproducts. Butter, cheese, yogurt, etc. are byproducts of milk that are consumed throughout the year. But there are some seasonal byproducts such as ice cream that it is produced of course by the milk, which uh, have a high demand during uh, the summer, especially during the summer because it's a product that might be consumed even in the winter in some areas. So it's clear that the consumer demands are variable throughout the year and it is the producer who has to deal uh, with the provision of and fulfillment of uh, these consumer preferential requirements and uh, particularly he has to deal with the production and the preservation of the nutritional value of food products. Food producers uh, want to have or must have a continuous supply of raw materials where the composition of and the quality of these raw materials are constant and the prices are predictable. But this can happen only in the ideal world because the real world is totally different. In reality, food processors are always in touch with agronomists or growers uh, with those who can provide these um, 
product, this raw material, to synchronize their requirements for the raw material, which must be of a high quality and particularly adaptable for food processing. The purpose of this lesson is to present an overview of the different techniques of the treatment or uh, of the transportation, of the storage, and uh, how to preparate the raw materials for having a good preservation with a high, very high quality. Some of the most important food processing technologies will be discussed in, um, discussed in more details in the following lessons. Well, raw materials and their deteriorating tendencies. Here uh, we can talk about the properties of raw material, the deterioration of raw material and which are the processes that might improve the quality and the characteristics of the food. Let's see each of these more detailed. The properties of raw material. Well, the selection of raw material is of great importance for the quality of the process product. The quality of raw materials can be rarely improved during processing and therefore inspection and control of processes can assist in the selection of raw material that comply with the process requirements. The definition of product quality can be quite broad as it is a vague concept. The quality of product is usually relative and there is no standard measure for its determination. Although certain rules have to be followed by the manufacturer, certain rules have to be followed even from the processors to ensure high quality standards. These uh, rules may be some factors uh, that have to be taken into consideration from the producers uh, to have a high quality products. If they want to produce these products with high quality, they have to take these factors into consideration. Like selecting the most suitable cultivars in the case of plant foods and selecting the suitable breeds in the case of animal products. All these phase or this stage of selection is, or this process in general, is very important and requires lots of attention. Proper maturity is another factor. Determining the proper maturity and harvesting time in the case of plant foods is very important for the quality of the product. Uniform maturity of foods a product is always preferred over maturity it would cause problems because it would be associated with high losses due to product residues and damages due to high microbial loads or due to lack of flavor and color etc. Harvesting is one of the factors that uh, must be taken into consideration during the processing of foods uh, choosing the right time or the right method, uh, method of harvesting are determinant for product quality. Manual harvesting is difficult and uh, requires time and labor costs. Uh, so growers usually prefer mechanized mar uh, harvesting for Mechanized harvesting products must have a uniform maturity, uniform size and uh, should, should be more resistant to mechanical damages. The main raw material properties of uh, importance to the processor are geometry, color, texture, functional properties and flavor. Geometry well, the uniformity of size or geometry of food units is very important as it facilitates the realization of a series of mechanized processing. For example, regular fruit size 
would greatly facilitate the washing, peeling and slicing operations. Size and shape are two characteristics of food units which are of a particular relevance uh, to packaging processes in terms of volume and in terms of the weight. For example, it's important to determine how many units or um, what, what quantity of food units should be packaged in uh, boxes. These would require a lot of work of measurement and mathematical calculation to determine the approximate quantities needed for the packaging process. Size and shape are also important when we talk about food processing uh, with high or low temperatures, as the thickness of the food units can affect the transfer of appropriate temperature into the center of the products. Foods with the regular shape and size help to have better control of the progress of food processing. For example, smaller size foods are easier to process, but due to exposed surfaces, may, uh, some products may undergo to various chemical reactions. For example, like uh, enzymatic reaction, which uh, may reduce the quality of the product. But, but certainly food units with geometric defects could be found and this is for sure. For this product, many difficulties uh, will be encountering in the washing, peeling and cutting processes. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, for having optimal geometry characteristics, it is important to select the appropriate varieties and to perform the sorting and grading operation in the best possible way. Color. The quality of raw material is an attribute of several factors, one of which is the color. The color and uniformity color of raw material is the first quality parameters evaluated by the consumers. And uh, this is an essential component, uh, the color for the product acceptance by the consumers. Color can also be linked with other quality features such as sensory or nourishing and helps to control them. Control of color of uh, real material, for example fruits and vegetables, came from their natural pigments. Uh, where the main pigments that we, gonna, we can mention are chlorophyll, which is responsible for the green color, carotenoids that are responsible for yellow, orange and red color, antotians, uh, that these pigment or polyphenols are responsible for red and blue color, and flavonoids that are responsible for yellow uh, color. All these components, uh, usually uh, the components that are uh, responsible for the color of the products are polyphenols. And what is not uh, worthy that is that uh, the color of the fruits and vegetables varies according to the stage of maturity, varies uh, even from the variety, etc. There are uh, certain factors that affect the changes of the color. The selection of raw materials for processing cannot be influenced so much by the color because through the processing the color will be changed when raw materials uh, will be treated with low temperature like freezing or freeze drying etc. The color will change slightly but when uh, it comes to high temperature treatments or more intense processing, the color will be changed significantly. An example here we can mention frozen peas where they turn from light green to dark color and this conversion um, happens because the conversion of chlorophyll to theophytin. Since the treatments spoil the color of the products, 
the manufacturer have worked to preserve the color through various forms, but the use of additives, both natural and artificial, has resulted in a more practical solution. However, when it comes to color as well as the other quality characteristics such as texture, it is worth noting that not all the varieties can be created for the preservation. For example, some varieties of potatoes are subject to browning during heat processing due to the Maillard reaction, uh, but this change in fried potatoes is desirable, but in canned products browning would be a major problem. In conclusion regarding the color, there are two main aspects that are important when you have to choose the raw material, the stage of maturity and classification by the color. Texture, another factor that influences the quality of raw material is texture. This characteristic is especially important when uh, these raw materials are going to be processed. During food processing, a number of structural changes occur in the food. Due to loss of moisture, protein denaturation, starch gelatinization, etc. Due to these changes, we understand that the selection of raw material for food processing is closely related to several factors such as the variety, stage of maturity, etc. Raw material uh, must be selected with a robust texture in order to withstand the mechanical stresses during processing, but also to ensure that uh, their quality and taste are acceptable to the consumer. Fruits and vegetables should be selected in a proper ripening because uh, only these products have the correct structure uh, after processing. Let's take peas again as an example, for freezing will be harvested earlier than uh, peas for canning. So, it's the same product but it changes uh, the harvesting time because of uh, the final product. If uh, having different um, technological processes for the same product but it is necessary to, uh, to choose the right uh, harvesting time uh, for, for this product, as in, in the example that we mentioned. Functional properties. Such components as water, carbohydrates, protein, lipids, mineral additives, etc. contribute to the nutritional value and sensory properties of raw material. It is precisely the combination of these properties that make up the functional properties of raw material. Uh, well, we should know that during storage and post-harvest processing, this component varies depending on storage condition, but also on the chemical composition of these products. Familiarity with chemical and biochemical composition of the raw materials and their post-processing behavior helps the manufacturer to make the right decision to control the desirable and undesirable reaction, as well as select the optimal storage parameters. Flavor. The flavor or the aroma is a subjective characteristic. It is not an essential feature for raw materials, as it is varies greatly after processing and especially after severe food processing. Food aromas are often improved in the food industry through the use of natural supplements. The aroma of food can be assessed by sensory analysis or by various tests for the content of aromatic ingredients.